Angular has support for validation logic at all three of the fundamental building blocks for forms, control, control group, and control array. You can wire up validation for these by passing in a validator function when you create them. Angular provides a set of validator functions as part of the platform, like required, min and max length, and pattern. These functions exist on a class named validators that is exported from at angular slash common, just like the rest of the Angular form goodies. So over in the order sheet component TS file, up in the import statement for at angular slash common, I can add validators to this list to make use of some of the built-in ones. And then down in the build form method, I'm going to add a required validator onto the customer name control. The form builder.control method accepts a validator function as the second parameter. So I can set the second argument in the call here to be validators.required. So this control is now required to have a value, but it would be helpful to give the user some feedback in the UI. So over in the order sheet component HTML file, I have a template reference variable for the customer name control already set up from the previous video, so I can make use of that. The abstract control class has a property named errors that provides an object representation of any validation errors, or null if none. So I'm going to add a div element below the customer name input, and I'll give it a CSS class named errors, which already has some styling for it over in the CSS file for this component. And on that div, I can put an ng if and set that equal to the expression customer name dot errors. And inside of that div, I'll add another div with an ng if set equal to customer name dot errors dot required. And I'll put some display text in here mentioning that this field is required. So the errors model will have properties for each validator that detected an error, and the name of those properties are set up by each validator. The Angular validators typically set up the property with the same name as the validator, thus why you would use required here. Now if I check this out in the browser, I see the error message is displayed because the field is empty, and if I fill it out the message is removed, and if I empty it the message comes back. You can also combine validators on a control by using the compose method on the validators class. So back in the code for the order sheet component TS file, in the build form method, where I'm setting up the customer name control. For that second argument, I'm going to give it validators.compose, which takes an array of validator functions. So I'll put the validators.required one in there, and I'll also add validators.minLength. MinLength can be configured with a minimum length value for the string that it's checking. So I will set this number to two. And then back over in the HTML template file, I can add another div in the errors list, this one with an ng if check for customer name dot errors dot min length. And for the text on this error, I can make use of the value in the min length property, which is actually an object with a property named required length that has that value that I set to the number two. So I can use this in the message with some text of must be at least so many letters and put in an interpolation statement, double curly braces, with customer name dot errors dot min length dot required length in it. And back over in the browser, both validators are in play, but only required is showing because the min length one is designed to only kick in if the value is not null or empty. So I can change the value of the customer name field and see the error reporting in play. So with Angular's base abstract control class functionality, you can set up validation rules in code via validator functions provided to the controls, and you can wire up visual feedback in the template by using the errors property off of the control object.